Hello, welcome back. Where the fuck have you guys been? Just kidding. I know I haven't put out an episode in a while. I went to a rave on Andromeda and some Arcturians gave me some ketamine. I went into a wormhole. I forgot I had a podcast. I hope everything's okay. Did I miss the rapture? ever take such a long break off of your job that you have to listen to past episodes of your job to remember how to do your job that's how hard i've been partying uh we got a lot we got a lot to cover we got a big couple of months if you guys notice the energy shifts there's been a lot of energy shifts we're uh we're doing a big collective jump i'm not going to get in it too much on this podcast but if you took a wrong turn Last year, around this time, this is it. We're, we're in a loop. We're in a loop of time. It's time to take the, the right turn. I'm going to be as vague as possible. I like to confuse you. Most importantly, it's time to charge your fucking avatars. Has you ever had somebody send you a screenshot and all you can notice is that their fucking phone is on 7%? It's like, what? What kind of life are you living? It's 4 p.m. Charge your goddamn battery. What is this? Why are you being so reckless? That is what it feels like to watch humans do anything. You all have avatars that run on energy and you are mostly running on 7%. You are mostly trying to accomplish things that require at least 70% of your battery being full. And you're trying to do it on 7%. Today we're going to talk about charging your goddamn avatar. This video game has an avatar it's got a physical body with its own mind and its own artificial intelligence it's funny that you guys are so paranoid about artificial intelligence it's inside you but that shit takes energy you have to put gas in the tank you have to put energy into the thing in order to use the energy to do the things this is so basic Humans don't get this. Humans don't pay any attention. Y'all just run around chasing your tails, running in circles. No energy. Just 7% flagrant, reckless 7% batteries. You know how in video games they show the bars? I haven't looked at a video game since like the original Nintendo. So bear with me. Do they still show you how many bars of energy, like how much life that person has? Close your eyes and imagine that you have that. You have bars of energy next to you. The bottom, the red, the reckless... Four bars, four red end of your gas tank bars. Above that, three orange, and above that, three yellow. You want to be in the yellow. I don't know why they didn't include green. Seems fucked up to me too, but nothing you guys do here makes any sense. Most of what you want to do requires you being in the yellow. You can't manifest if you're not in the yellow. Your ability to command your reality. Now, not control. Notice the difference. Command is something like internal authority. It's autonomy. It's powerful. Have you ever noticed when your shit gets fucked up, when you're a mess and you're frustrated and all of a sudden everything, things are falling off the shelf and you're tripping and people around you start to get chaotic and get in your way? That is you commanding your reality from a place of just mess. That's when you're a mess. That's when you're below three. Yellows. Finish the sentence, Jessa. Oh, hey, hi, sorry. I'm an eight-dimensional being. I'm really not going to keep doing this introduction. Go listen to the old fucking episodes. You know what I mean? I'm an eight-dimensional being. I don't, I'm here in between 
being literally anywhere else I can go, helping you guys learn how to play the video game, you sometimes act like you're not playing. Because if you knew you were playing a video game, you would charge your fucking battery. Anyway, the yellow is where you need to be. You need to be in the goddamn yellow. Almost none of you are ever in the yellow. You ever had the kind of day where it feels like gravity doesn't exist and everything you do is just perfectly on sync? Just perfectly in sync. Everything just comes to you exactly how you need it. You're like magnetic. You're funny. You're smart. You look great. That's when you're in the yellow. That's why life... Life is awesome. And then what do you do? You spend that energy as fast as physically possible because most of you love to be exhausted. You love to be exasperated. You love it. You're like, okay, I feel great. What is the shittiest food I could possibly put in my body right now? What? in the fried fuck can I do to sabotage this? Is there something that could trigger me? Could I find something to spiral me into an anxiety attack right now? I don't know what to do with all this energy. I don't know what to do with the ability to command my reality. I must fuck this up. Is there something I can plug into that will just drain the battery this is how you guys live i think i don't know when i see screenshots of your reality i go charge your fucking battery what the fuck how come i can't manifest this new job i don't know you have six percent of your energy what are the odds that you're going to be able to see a path out of whatever pile of shit you've manifested this far. Sorry, I feel, am I a little punchy? Is this a little, <laughs> coming a little hot? Should I tone it down maybe? I'm the one that didn't show up to work for the last three weeks. That ketamine, those Andromedans get is, whew, it's fucking, it's great. You think I would be more pleasant. Once you get below the yellow, you lose the ability to command your reality. When you're not able to command your reality, that means that your reality is no longer mirroring back to you your highest ideal good. It's, it, you, you stop creating in your immediate reality the things that you ultimately want, the things you've been trying to manifest. The people around you are going to start to be the shittiest version of you. That's an interesting uh, typo. The people around you will start to be the shittiest version of themselves, often mirroring back to you whatever your wounding is. So your partner if could suddenly become distant or clingy, whichever one freaks you the fuck out more. People will be less patient and compassionate with you. If you don't like people standing close to you, they'll suddenly be standing close to you. Uh, this is what happens when you lose the ability to command your reality, not control. Control is something that you do when you're feigning or reaching or clinging outside of you. Command is something that comes from internally. You know what I'm talking about? You pull up to the thing and you get the fucking perfect parking spot. They have your favorite thing at the thing. Everyone's cool. You know what I'm talking about? Those days and they're few and far between because you're not charging your battery. You need energy to manifest. You need to be in the yellow to truly create the things that you want. Now, when you get into the orange, what starts to happen is your programming or other people's version of reality or just the default matrix start to control the matrix for you. That's, that's what then starts to mirror back to you. This is when reality starts to get unpredictable starts coming at you. Things start happening to you. If you're trying to manifest big things, you really have to get into that. Now, I think this is what people are calling high vibe. Get into a high vibration. But they're the worst. Like, it's just, I can't say that and be serious. It's literally what it is. It's literally a higher vibration. But man, has that phrase been used by... We'll talk more about how to charge it in a little bit. So you need, you need energy to manifest. If you are trying to 
manifest things from a place of pure exhaustion and desperation, you're not, you're going to have a really hard time pulling that off because everything is energy. Matter is energy. Everything in your reality is the result of energy being moved around. And if you don't have that filled up, it's not coming out of you and being created by you. So now we have to say what, what charges your battery, what depletes your battery. This is something that you need to get a piece of paper out and be honest with yourself. This is uh, something that you need to become aware of in your day-to-day life. I recommend getting some sort of phone journal, some sort of diary thing so that you can just throughout the day be keeping track of, okay, I went out to lunch with Susan. Man, am I fucking drained. I need a nap. All right, well, let's put Susan on the, you know, Let's, let's let's keep Susan away when we're in the orange. Went out to lunch with uh, Megan. We talked about higher dimensional shit. She, I feel jacked. This is amazing. I want to go create things now. All right. So Megan is someone who charges me. Susan, deplete. I'm like, fuck Susan. You know what I mean? Food is a big deal. Food, everything you put in your mouth is a big deal. It matters. Now, listen, a lot of the reason that people try to change their diet is to fit into some sort of beauty standard. And it doesn't, that could, nothing could matter less. Your beauty standards are so dumb. Could not matter less. None of these boxes matter. They, and, and a lot of times that's why you struggle. It's like, why can't I lose weight? Because you don't care. Because a higher part of you know it doesn't fucking matter if other people like your avatar's shape. Who gives a shit? It's so vapid and stupid that your higher self is like, I don't care. I don't, I, I, I can't bring myself to care more about what this idiot thinks about my stomach than how good these Oreos taste. So you don't care. That's why you can't. You struggle with food, it's because it doesn't matter what people think about your avatar. Trying to make everyone's avatar look the same is the most boring shit. How human is that? However, paying attention to food and what it does for your energy levels is much easier. It's much e- it's an instant, it's an instant feedback. You eat the Oreos and you go. I don't feel good now. I had a ton of energy and I was laughing and having fun. And now I I have brain fog and I'm staring at a wall and I'm thirsty in a weird way. And my mouth feels like I ate paste. Okay. Write that on your diary. Oreos, not a good energy source. You don't put sugar in your gas tank. That's not a coincidence. Sugar's garbage. It's garbage. Food. It gives you a little bit of a high, but that high just makes you addicted. You just have to have more sugar for the crash. You find this about a lot of things. You find this about ca- like a lot of it. I'm not going to tell you what you can and cannot eat. For some people, it's like animals help them. For other people, it slows them down. Get to know your avatar. Get to know your en- like what charges your battery, what depletes your battery, and then look at it all from that perspective when you really stop and go okay if I eat this I'm gonna be tired I'm gonna be dumb I'm not gonna have a good day it's a lot easier to go why would I eat that then it's gonna taste good for 10 seconds and then I'm gonna be a moron for the rest of the day so why would I do that it's much much easier than some hypothetical bikini body bullshit that nobody actually fucking cares about what are things that charge you? Meditation. My avatar has done, like, meditated twice and, and I've not stopped talking about it yet. Meditation, listening to music. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Because that's introversion means you charge by yourself. Extroversion means you get charged with other people. Are you, are you what you think you are? A lot of people think they're extroverted because they like people. That's not what it means. Where do you charge? What charges you? Figure out what charges you and prioritize that. A lot of introverts being overly exposed to social situations. Maybe not now because you're all locked in your caves, but 
If you're an introvert, you need to prioritize that time to yourself. You need to learn how to say, I'm done with this conversation now. A lot of introverts are also have a fawn trauma response. So you just do what other people want you to do. A lot of people pleasers out there. You got to stop pleasing people because it's draining your battery. Social media is wrecking most of you for a hundred different reasons. Pay attention to what your body feels like and your mind feels like when you're consuming social media. Do you disassociate and you're just scrolling and you're looking at things that make you sad or make you mad or make you feel bad about yourself? Pay attention to that. Ask yourself, what is this that I'm doing? Why am I draining my battery? Why am I looking at this screen that makes me feel like shit and diminish the amount of energy I need to create the thing that I want. I say that I want to make my own business. I say that I want to move across the country and I know that I need a hundred gallons of energy for that. And every day I get on here and I drain 70 gallons of it for what, what is this for? That's such an easier equation than trying to discipline yourself out of using social media. I don't care if you use social media. It can be fun. It can sometimes charge you. If you like found your way into some sort of group full of people that are resonant souls and you're using it to charge you, but for most people, it's just something toxic in there that's draining you. Take a little cleanse. Take a little fast. Quit it for three days and see if you feel different. Narratives. Narratives can charge you and also deplete you. We talked about narratives last week. And by last week, I mean, I don't know, four months ago when I put out the last episode. What's an example of a narrative? This is where, what do you want versus what do you not want? A lot of people go, I don't want to do this job anymore. It's like, well, what do you want to do instead? They don't fucking know. They have no idea. I just don't want to do this job anymore. Okay, we'll feel that in your body. Feel what it feels like in your body to say, I don't want to do this job anymore. You're implying that you're trapped. You're implying that you're stuck, which is disempowering, which depletes your energy. Now, instead of saying, I don't want to do this job anymore, say, I want to start my own business. Feel that? Or I want to go work at a different company. You know, do you feel the difference between not wanting something, wanting to escape something, and wanting to try something new your narratives matter your narratives matter and this is you know this is something we all do i am looking forward to syncing up with a resident life partner how does that make you feel versus why can't i find a boyfriend i'm tired of being alone i am tapping into abundance versus I don't have any money. I'm broke. I can't afford that. If you just stop and say those things, say whatever your versions of those things are. What is a, what is a on the way up version of something versus stuck in the old thing? You'll feel the difference in your body. You can feel the energy kind of spin out from you or kind of sink. Empathy will fuck you up. We, ha- we have to do an entire empathy episode on how empathy actually sucks but there's a difference between empathy and compassion you have the ability to tap into other people's energy now all of you have that i know some of you love to think that it's some magic thing that only you have but empathy is a universal human thing it's actually not good for you it's not good for you to be tapping into other people's energy it makes it very difficult for you to have a sense of self and really know what it is that you want. It's a trauma response for most of you. For most of you, it's a result of your childhood trauma combined with just how energy works. Compassion is allowing your cup to be full, protecting your own energy, seeing someone in need and choosing to help them or show them compassion or do something nice for them or hold space for them. Completely different than just absorbing all that shit like a sponge. Empathy has you un- like knowing what everyone else's shit is and then half the time that just grabs a hold of your own trauma responses or your own people-pleasing bullshit. Then you sur- surrender your own boundaries to give somebody else what they think they want. It's a mess. Empathy's not that great for you. 
it's cool that you get it, but it's it's not that good. It's usually uh, draining. You don't have to be soaking up everyone else's experience. You have enough of your own shitty experiences. You know what I mean? Do those ones. Within the introverts, extroverts, there's some stuff to think about with what kind of connections. Honestly, weigh every single one of your connections. Some of your connections are draining as hell. Some of them are draining because you don't set boundaries. You need to set boundaries. When someone has expectations of you that aren't your responsibility, people that make you feel guilty for not texting them back, be honest. Be honest with the people in your life. Listen, I like you. I like you a lot. I'm available for this much. I don't text you back because I'm in my own world. I'm having my own shit. And I don't want to feel guilty that I didn't text you back because I'm not thinking about you because that doesn't make me a bad person. That makes me a person who's living on the planet in 2021. And it's a lot. And I don't need guilt and shame, mom, for not calling you back. I'll call you when I'm ready to call you. I don't owe you anything. I don't owe anyone anything. When I do get on the phone with you or we do get out to lunch, you spend the entire time complaining or you spend the entire time taking passive aggressive shots at me. You're trying to convince me that I'm bad. I'm not doing that. This is draining. I don't want to do this. I don't want to have this sort of connection. Set boundaries. Tell people that. You have the right to say that. You have the right to protect your energy. People who love you, they'll get it. A lot of You'd be amazed how many people just need to be told like, I'm not responsible for your experience. I'm available to call you when I'm in the place to call you. I don't owe you that. Maybe you have friends who just complain constantly, has nothing to do with you, but they're just, that's energy transference. If you don't have space for that, if that stresses you out, if it activates some part of you that makes you feel like you need to take care of people or fix their problems, pay attention to that. How do you feel after you get off the phone with that friend? I'm not saying ditch your friends, but set some boundaries. My avatar got addicted to fixing everyone else's shit. There's just a way to avoid her own bullshit, but it took a while for her to realize like that actually like empties out your cup, fixing other people's problems, empties out your cup. If you had any sort of childhood trauma where your parents were a mess or addicts or whatever, you, there's a part of you that thinks you have to fix other people's problems in order to be worthy. Pay attention to that shit when that's getting activated. That's taking your energy that you should be using for you. Now, if you go out and you help someone and you're genuinely helping someone from a place of compassion and a full cup, that shouldn't empty your energy. That's an energy exchange and it's beautiful and it's fulfilling and it actually gives you energy. Very different. When you're aware of what you're doing and you're consciously choosing to go do something that actually helps someone, letting someone take a shit on your plate at lunch doesn't necessarily help anyone. Endlessly venting about every fucking thing doesn't necessarily, there's a difference between venting and processing. There's a difference between just swimming around in the mud endlessly and saying, hey, here's this experience and I'm working through it. Can you hold space for me to, there's difference, a different energy. You have to decide which one is which. There is no black and white answer to this. You have to check into your body with everything that you do. When you wake up in the morning, close your eyes. Am I in the yellow? I'm not in the yellow. What would get me into the yellow? I could go for a run. Getting your heart rate up is great for every, well, most people's energy. I can't tell you what's good for your energy. You have to be honest with yourself. Maybe go for a run. Maybe meditate. Take a shower. Listen to some music. Have a talk with someone that you find energetically charging. Or do you get up in the morning and you go, okay, I'm in the orange. I'm going to stare at my phone for two hours while I drink this too much of this coffee with sugar in it. Now I'm already tired. I'm not going to drink any water because that might help. I'm going to leave for work late. I'm going to stress the entire way to work that I'm late. Now I'm down. I'm pushing red by noon. I can't even get my work done. So now I'm going to drink a bunch more coffee. And that's actually not helping. I'm going to come home. I'm going to be pissed. My boss is going to be a dick while I'm at work. I'm going to come home. Everyone in my house is going to be an asshole because I've lost complete control of my environment, my reality. Once you get down past the orange, you lose the ability to regulate your emotions and your physical body. 
So now you might start to feel sick. You might get a headache. You might get anxiety. You might start to feel depressed. I'm not saying that is the, the cause of anxiety and depression, but it can trigger it. Your avatar doesn't have what it needs to play the game. And on those days, it doesn't feel like you're in a video game. It feels like life is happening to you. And that's because life is happening to you. Because you didn't do anything to empower yourself to play the game on that day. Start a journal. Pay attention to your body. Pay attention to your experience. Record everything you can for a week or two. Notice the patterns. You'll be surprised. You'll be like, damn, why do I do this? Why do I eat that dessert every fucking night? And it, and it, and it hurts me. Why do I uh, gossip? Why do I watch this garbage television show? Why do I stare at my phone? Why do I get on Twitter when it makes me feel miserable? You'd be surprised how much of this is just right there. It's just right there in front of you. You're not giving your avatar what it needs. When you get below orange into red, which a lot of people just live their entire life like this, you'll start to be a vampire. And the people around you will start to vampire you. What a vampire is is someone who's trying to charge their battery with your energy. It starts to feel like other other people aren't as good of a friend as I am. Other people don't give me what I need. Nobody owes you shit. It's your job to fill your battery. It's their job to fill their battery. But the entire system is set up to drain you. Everything is set up to drain you in this external reality. This is what you're starting to shift. You want to take command of the video game and start to play the video game from a place of choose your adventure. You have to do what it takes to be empowered to do that. This is a big part of it. Nobody outside of you is responsible for your battery being charged. It's also not their fault if you allow them to charge your to drain your battery. It's your job to be aware of yourself, aware of your environment, and aware of your needs. And then the hard part, advocate for yourself. Be honest. Set boundaries. The boundaries thing is really hard if you've never done it. It's hard for like twice. And then it's addicting as hell. Before you know it, you're just like, here's my boundary. I'm never wearing shoes again. I don't know where that came from. That didn't make any sense. The old love paradigm is draining this entire, like, I, you need to complete me bullshit. It doesn't work. It never works. It makes everybody miserable. Everybody is doing this. You need to give me this shit thinking that that's going to get them the happy relationships. The people in the happy relationships, they don't do that shit. That's why they're happy. They take care of themselves, and then they share that with each other. Your cup has to be full. Your partner cannot fill your cup. Your mother cannot fill your cup. Your kids cannot fill you. Nobody can fill that for you. Nobody can fill that energy up for you. You have to do that for yourself. But when it's drained, when it's low, you're going to want to pull from someone else. You're gonna, there's like a fear that you're not even tuned into, that you're about to die because you're about out of energy. And so you'll start trying to pull from other people. That can manifest as a lot of things. You could try to get your partner to spend more time with you. You can start trying to guilt people. Because guilting someone does make them give you energy. It's garbage energy. And it's really shitty. It's a really shitty habit. Pay attention if you are taking shots or passive aggressive remarks at your friends and family trying to make them feel bad. That's you trying to take their energy. Pay attention when people do that to you. Just tell them, no, stop trying to make me feel bad about myself. That's insane. Last thing, brain fog. A lot of people talking about brain fog or like kind of spacing off ADHD. I'm not talking, I'm just talking about the symptoms of these things. We tend to use a lot of mental health words for some of these experiences I'm not a psychiatrist. I mean, for the love of God. Don't get your mental health advice from this, please. But these things where you space out and you can't pay attention, you can't communicate, you can't remember words, that is galactically your avatar is going into power saving mode. It's the same thing when you have that thing on your phone where you recklessly let your battery get down to 6% so it stops showing you the screen in color and you can no longer do half of the features of the phone. It's because there's not enough energy to do that. The battery's not charged. So we're just going to try to not die for now. This is an attempt. The reason it is so frequent right now for people on this path, this is an attempt 
And I'm not saying there's not a 3D cause for your shit. Everything's this and that. So I don't, I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. But if for no reason you're having this brain fog experience suddenly, this is your avatar's attempt at getting you synced up with how the game works. When you have depleted your energy, your brain just powers down because you're not doing anything good with it anyway. Let's be honest. You're like ruminating on the, some stupid thing you said in 2008. And you don't have enough energy to participate in the external world. So your body's trying to tell you, like, go take a nap, idiot. Go just go lay down. You don't have enough battery to play the game. So just go stare at a wall somewhere and figure out what it is that you need. Everyone has different symptoms. Some of you have illness. Some of you will start to feel sick. Some of you will start to get headaches. Some of you will start to get nauseous. Some of you will start to get irritable. Some of you will start to get nitpicky. You know what the symptoms are of your energy getting depleted. Pay attention to those. And now when you start to get irritable, instead of projecting even harder on your external environment, go, wait a second. I'm irritable, which means I'm below the yellow check in with my body. Where do I intuitively feel like I'm at? You can just ask your body, how many bars of energy do I have? And if it says you have one orange, okay, what do I need? And your body will just answer you. This, this piece of technology that you are walking around in is amazing. You've just had it your whole life. So you don't realize how sophisticated it is. You can say body, what do you want? And it'll tell you some random Shit. It's very powerful. Use it. If you get these symptoms, brain fog, things shutting down, stop what you're doing and go refill. It can take five minutes. And then throughout your day, check in with yourself and stay in the yellow. When you get into that yellow and you're consistently living in that yellow, you can manifest anything. A lot of you trying to manifest is you're trying to drive across the country on a quarter tank of gas. You just can't, you like legitimately can't. Everything is energy. You can't manifest anything without energy. All right. That's enough. That's all I got. Um, some of you have joined the Patreon and have no idea what's happening there because it's very different than this podcast. Um, and you never listened to the last podcast soberish. Really hard for me to tell you to listen to anything else I've ever done because it's, cringy to think that anyone's listening to anything I said last year because this is a very quickly evolving landscape and I've died five times since then but if you want to binge on something and catch up listen to Soberish is another podcast and um, also you can join the Patreon that gives you two to four bonus episodes of month you can get for live streams, energy updates, lots of shit. I already talked about it. You can find that at jessareed.com. There is no readings for the foreseeable future. I am charging my avatar. Music is made by Mark Pontius, who is now... I don't even know how to tell you this fucking screen name. It's Suitnop, which is Pontius backwards, but instead of an S, it's a five. Yeah, good luck. Um... On Instagram, I'm Jessa Reed Comedy on Twitter and Instagram, but you can't find those right now, probably, because I am charging my battery. Taking a break from all of the bullshit. See you guys at some point in the future. <laughs> <laughs>